would you go with me to the book of Genesis? Because if we're going to look at it, we have to look at it in its original setting. Um, when we're coming forth in this subject, I told you I was going to start with you in chapter number two. But for time's sake, I'm going to move on to chapter three. Uh, beginning of chapter three, the serpent is subtle. We're doing okay on time. Um, but I want to use it because I believe there's going to be some ministry time at the end of it. And I want to use it effectively. We see something happening here in Genesis three. The man and his wife has now been, has now been created. And the serpent comes and he's more subtle than any of the beasts of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, he said unto who? So we really can't talk about motherhood without in some way bringing in the discussion of womanhood because womanhood precedes motherhood. You are a woman before you're a mother, right? So he talks to the woman and, and he said, he brings up and he says, Yea, hath God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, we may, we may eat of all the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto her, woman, ye shall not surely die. So he questions God's instructions, citing not what liberty God gave them, but what restriction God placed upon them. And this is what the enemy always does. He comes and he brings to your attention where the restrictions lie, not where the liberties lie. Because he knows that in your nature, there is a desire to fight against the thing that is restrictive, whether it is done out of love or not. In, in our nature, it's a desire to fight against the thing that has, that has been restricted. So he comes to her with that. And he says, uh, has God said that you couldn't eat of every tree? And she said, yes, all the trees except the tree that's in the mystery garden. And, and then the serpent said to her, uh, God told you a lie. In verse number four, he calls them to question God's very nature. God is a God of truth. And everything God said is true. At no point in human history and at no point in the future will God ever lie. He told you the truth. So when you acknowledge that and you begin to, uh, to walk with God in this thing, uh, this is what the battle, the battle becomes in your mind because the truth of God must rise up against the facts. Yep. Yep. There you go. Truth must rise up against facts Amen. because truth does not change and facts do. It may be a fact that there is an ailment or sickness in your body, but the truth is by his stripes you were healed. Amen. So the battle becomes... In my mind, do I side with the truth of God or am I resting my hopes or my expectations on the facts? And you and I will begin, we'll deal with some of that on the series of healing that, that we'll get into in just a uh, beginning next week. And, and God doth know, he says in verse 5, for God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also to her husband that was with her. So he's, he's here in the midst of it. He's hearing the conversation going on and he's not interrupting. She, de she is deceived, according to Timothy, and she gives to him and he eats without being deceived. And then they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the cool of the day. Uh, go with me down to verse... Uh, 14. Prior to that, you know, he calls them and they, they, some things become apparent. Where they once loved the presence of God, they're now fleeing from it. Uh, where they once knew no fear, now they are fearful in terms of their relationship with God. In verse 14, and the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. And upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of the life. 
and I will put, this is verse 15, and I will put enmity, because this is the first time we're talking about production now. This is the first time we're talking about the notion of motherhood is in this verse. He says, I will put enmity between thee and who? I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. And he goes on to say about the seed, and it, the seed of the woman, shall bruise thy head. Please circle in your Bible the phrase bruise thy head because it is an oriental phrase. It is a figure of speech which means to break the authority or to break the reign or to break the power. I'm putting enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed and the woman's seed is going to break the power of the devil. He's going to break the reign of death. Are you listening to me? Now although God is dealing out curses and the word curse literally means to him in. It means to him around. So, so literally, he was doing damage control. Something had broken through. The membrane, as it were, between heaven and earth is broken through. And God is now coming and mending. He's, he's hemming things around so that the damage can't overflow itself. And in the midst of him dealing out the curses, he comes with this word. The woman's seed is going to break your authority. It's going to break your power and it's going to release the reign of death. Now, that, that is a serious statement. It has very serious implications here on Mother's Day because here's what it says. That once sin seized humanity, once sin seized the control of humanity, it had a new master. Man had a new master and it was death. Death towered over everything. Death was the largest figure on the horizon, and it cast its shadow over everything that man was about. Death came to his physical body. Death came to the way he thought. Death came to the works of his hands. The, the ground began not to, produce, not to yield its life to him, but death touched everything. But in this statement, what God is saying is that the seed of the woman is going to, listen to me, listen with your heart. The seed of the woman is going to break the reign of death. It's going to break the reign of death. Death will no longer be the largest thing on the horizon. Listen to Romans chapter 8. It says, there therefore now condemn no condemnation of them who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of Spirit of what? Life. The spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So now death is not the largest thing on the horizon anymore. The largest figure on the horizon is life. Life in Christ Jesus. So that everything I touch now is to produce life. It is to come forth living. My finances are supposed to multiply and increase and produce. My children are supposed to be that way. They're not supposed to end up in jail. Not supposed to end up in some kind of perverted, twisted thing. They're to produce life. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yeah. My relationship is to produce life. It's to be life-giving. Because life is what stands most prominent on the horizon now. Not death. And it came at this promise of Genesis 3.15. The seed of the woman is going to break the authority. It's going to stop the reign of death. Oh, I don't know about you, but every time I think about that, it makes me happy. It makes me happy that God has made a way so that death does not have to touch. Death no longer has the right to touch anything that belongs to me. Death does not have the right anymore. God has so set it up that my life is to be filled with life-giving influences with everything that I touch. And so, now what does this say though? What does this say? It says that, that death sees the sovereignty and death held mankind in slavery until the coming of Jesus. But here's what it says about motherhood. 
This, is, this astounds me. Because the promise God just made hinges on motherhood. If there is no motherhood, if there is no seed of the woman, the promise cannot take place. With that, God elevates womanhood and motherhood as high as it can be elevated. Because there is no way fulfillment of the promises of God can take place in the earth without first coming through the womb. God hollows the womb of the woman. He sanctifies the womb of the woman. And he declares that through that vehicle, through the womb of the woman, all of the promises of God are going to come into the earth realm. And so Paul recognizes what, how womanhood puts men and women on, equ- on a place of equality because he says, although the woman was created for the man, the man is by the woman. Motherhood places us on equal planes. Yes, there is a connection, and I'll get to this in a minute. There is a a connection and responsibility for the woman to complete the man. But there is no man on earth without having first come through the womb of a woman. (laughs) Somebody said, don't forget it. So listen to me. God rests the fulfillment of all of his promises on motherhood. I mean, that's amazing to me. When a child comes into the world, a child comes with promises built in. Now here's the the other thing about motherhood that this this focuses on. God made a promise in Genesis 3.15. So all the promises of God hinge on a woman's ability to reproduce. Now she can't reproduce without a man. Two women can't make a baby. I'm not going to stay on it long. I just want you to realize. I want you to realize this morning. Two women cannot make a baby. Biology, psychology, and every other ology (laughs) is against the same genders coming together. It absolutely is. Theology is against it. Biology is against it. Psychology is against it. Because God had order. God has order. He set the order in place. The order is that through the womb of the woman, I'm going to bring all of my promises into the earth. Because you are a promise from God. When a child is born, listen to me, beloved. When a child is born, it is a signal that God is not finished with mankind. That he's, he's embedded into the birth of that child something significant for its day. It's born at its time for a reason. Amen. And so as I was meditating on this, the Lord said to me about barrenness, about those who, who have not yet produced a child or have produced a child and lost one or two or three or four. To pray over your womb this morning. Because I want you to realize that is God's doorway to his promises being fulfilled. So I want you to lay your hands on yourself. Ladies, you don't have to stand or anything. Just lay your hands on yourself. I 
And while you're laying your hands on yourself and, and you're in this room and you're, you're, you're perhaps not even identified except by people who know you or know your situation. I want to just tap into this thing of of where a woman can potentially go emotionally. You, you know some of it from scripture. Uh, while your, your hands are laid on you, I just want you to keep your hands there because this is part of it. This is part of what I saw in the spirit. Uh, Hannah was unable to have children and she had a sister wife, if you will, Panina, that just gave her difficulty about that. Gave her difficulty about it. To the point where Hannah yearned before God. She says, I must have children. My husband loves me, Elkanah, he loves me, but his love is not enough for me. In fact, he was upset over that very fact. He said, isn't my love enough for you? And the scriptures doesn't say that she answered, answered him back, but it does say that she cried out to God uh, with such zeal in the temple that Eli thought she was drunk. She yearned in her heart for her body to fulfill the purpose God intended for it to fulfill and to bring children into the earth. And God heard Hannah's cry. You see, a woman can feel less than fully woman. She can, full, she can feel less than fully productive when her womb does not yield children. And a man likewise. If the problem is, is on the male side, he can feel like I'm less than. What's wrong with me? Why is God shutting off a remembrance of himself in the earth through me? What has disqualified me? But I've come with some news this morning. Listen to me. I've come with a word from God for you. that what stands on the horizon of your life is not barrenness. What stands on the horizon of your life is Isaiah 54. Go with me to the 54th chapter of Isaiah. Are you there? 54, verse number one. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear. Now, do you know how ridiculous of a statement that is to the natural mind? Sing. Don't you mean agonize? Sing. Don't, don't you mean? Don't you mean to rend my hands? Don't you mean to hide myself in shame someplace? No, no, he meant exactly what he said. He said, sing. Sing, O barren, thou, thou that didst not bear. Break forth into singing. Cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. More are the children. More are the children. And that's, that's what the Lord prompted my heart to repeat as you're laying your hands on yourself this morning. More are the children. Father, I thank you for every woman that has not yet born or women, or women that have born and have uh, uh, miscarried children. In the name of Jesus Christ, on this Mother's Day, May the 12th, 
Father, in Jesus' name, I make declaration over what you said in my heart. More are the children. More are the children in this sanctuary. More are the children in nursery. More are the children. More are the children that, that, uh, uh, that, that, that uh, are welcomed into the arms of a mother. More are the children that will be sustained fully through pregnancy. More are the children. Would you say that with me? Just say more are the children. Say it again. More are the children. Father, I thank you and I praise you that that word has been released in faith. I've done exactly what you showed me to do. And I thank you that as a result of it, these wombs shall receive children, more children. And they'll break forth in song and they'll cry aloud in singing. And they'll cry aloud just like the, woman, the women who are in travail. They will cry with joy. They will cry, Father God, under you because their womb has produced life. You said also in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, that none shall be barren among you. And Father, I thank you and I praise you that this day, this Mother's Day, you marked this time for the women in this house. At this point in the service, you've marked this time for the women in this house to bring forth children to bring forth children to speak to the womb and thank you father god the wombs are strong and sustained life full term in the name of jesus and the people of god said amen amen, amen. give the lord a hand of praise thank you lord we've not done that lightly joseph and maggie have a baby now just because something like that happened in the service one day and God gave them a child. Amen. And he'll give more children. Somebody say more of the children. More. Okay, so as we move from, from, from there, seeing God making the promise in Genesis 3.15 that he was going to use uh, the woman to bruise the head of the serpent, he's going to take the authority of the serpent. I want to say something about motherhood now. Uh, because... The reproductive process lets us know that the body of Jesus came from Mary. You remember the scripture says in the book of Hebrews, uh, sacrifices and offerings thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared for me. And lo, I've come to do uh, that which is written of me in the volume of the books. A body was prepared. What happened is that the seed, which is God's word, did like the natural seed, went into the egg and released a DNA code. It wasn't the natural seed of man. It was the supernatural word of God, being born again by the word of God. Same thing happened to you. An immaculate conception happened to you at the point where you were born again. The word of God went into the womb of your spirit and the DNA of God was released and you became his child. Well, the same thing happens in a woman, when she is seated, that the sperm swims its way and it wiggles its way after it's reached its de destination into the egg and releases a DNA code. The DNA code determines everything about the child. God used the example of womanhood to exemplify that. That he gets his word into you. And just, just as the woman, remember, uh, you remember what Mary's words were? And these are incredibly important words. When Gabriel came to her and said, uh, you know, you're going to have a child and his name shall be called Jesus. He'll save his people from his sins. Mary said in uh, Matthew chapter 1, she said, how shall these things be seeing that I know not a man? And the, the answer of the angel to her was, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you and overshadow you. God has given the woman an irreplaceable responsibility to bring forth legitimate citizens to the earth. There are no aliens. I don't care what you think about your teenage son or daughter. They are not aliens. They came to the earth through the birth process, they're legal here. And because of their legality, the woman 
then is God's answer to complete his promises. My seed, any man's seed, is left incomplete unless he has the partnership of a woman to complete it. And that was true even when it comes to God. His promises were left unfulfilled without a woman needing to complete, uh, being needed to complete that process. Once she completes it, she's a nurturer. Remember, uh, remember what Jesus said in Psalms 22. In Psalms 22 is one of the most dramatic passages of scripture I have ever read or studied. Because in Psalms 22, I find Jesus, the son of God. David is prophetically talking about him. But I find Jesus, the son of God, going in and out. He dances on the realm of sanity in Psalms 22. But one thing he says there in the midst of all of that pressure being placed on him, because you understand that on the Son of Man was placed the sins of us all. The sins of us all. And it pleased God to bruise him for our sake. But he makes this statement in Psalms 22. Thou hast caused me to hope while I was on my mother's breast. Thou hast caused me to hope while I was on my mother's breast. Because the woman is not only the factor that completes the promises of God and legitimizes the promise of God on earth, but she is also a nurturer. She's the one who keeps speaking words of life and hope and strength into the child. So we have a colloquialism that says this, the hand that rocks the cradle, anybody know the rest of it? Rules the world. Rules the world. The hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. Because as a child, as a, as a child, Jesus found hope. He found hope in his mother's arms. She told him, I don't even know everything about who you are, but I do know how you came into the world. One day, maybe this was her conversation with him, one day, I was just minding my own business, and an angel appeared unto me and told me that I was going to have you. He even told me your name. And your name means Savior. Your job is to save people from their sins. Listen to this. Have you ever thought about, have you ever thought about what Jesus would hear from the ears, of, from the mouth of his mother as he, as he nursed at her breast? What she said as she wiped his little tears? The psalmist said, she caused me to hope. Now that's no different than a mother who has a child and the child grows up and somehow becomes wayward, somehow turns his or her attention down a dark alley. Ask the people in prison this morning. Who's there with you when everybody else, when all of your homeboys has turned their back on you? Ain't nobody writing you. Ain't nobody sending you a uh, 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 commissary. Commissary. Somebody is still hanging with you. And many times, not all the time, but many times, it's the mom that's doing it. And who's ready to take you in when your sentence at the pen is over? Mama's willing to take you in. Because something built into her causes you to hope. In this way, she pictures the relentless pursuit of the Holy Spirit after you. She pictures how relentless the Holy Ghost is. No matter what you're going through, no matter how difficult, the, the Holy Ghost just keeps coming after you. He keeps loving you, keeps talking to you, keeps winning your heart.
This is, this, is, this is what we have. This is the privilege that we have pictured in motherhood is that just as she causes Jesus to hope, the Holy Spirit comes upon you and he begins to be your mother. He begins to incubate over you. You know, he does that. In, in, in Genesis, we just heard this prophetically released in this house that the Spirit of God is moving or he's hovering, incubating over you. She completes the promise of God. Then she causes us to hope. And then she's tireless. Lastly, she's tireless. There, men and women operate differently. And I'm not saying one is better than the other or, or any of that. I'm just saying they're different. Our children were sick. Uh, I, would, I would join Janice and pray the prayer of faith. And I'm going to bed. I believe what I just prayed. I'm going to bed. Not Janice. She'd wait with that child. And on occasions waited all night long. I was sawing logs. There's something to be said about <laughs> there's something to be said about the tenacity of a woman. Tireless, just won't quit. In that way, she also pictures the Holy Ghost. Because he's gonna stay with you. Remember what Jesus said about it? He, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, and he will abide with you how long? Forever. 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 No matter what I'm walking through, no matter how calloused my heart becomes, no matter how difficult it, it seems to me to take another step, he's going to abide with me. He's going to stay with me. I don't know about you, but I'm glad about that. He never gives up. He never gives up. Stand on your feet, please. He couldn't lift womanhood any, to any higher plane than he's already lifted it. He couldn't lift it any higher. She pictures something. She pictures the Holy Spirit. The powerful Holy Spirit at work in you. And this morning, I just want to pray for you. We'll be here at the end of the service for any of you who have not received Christ as your personal Savior and Lord, and you have perhaps walked away from him or backslidden. And you don't know Jesus as your Savior. If you die in your sins, you die separate from God, and you remain separate from God for all eternity. Did you hear what I just said? Please don't walk out of here with that. Don't walk out of here separate from God because you don't know when your last breath is. Did you notice the trees this morning when you came in that had been trimmed and, and a wonderful job had been done on them? A relationship with a friend made that happen. And uh, he, he was a tree trimming business. His name is John. John is a 47-year-old brother who's dead today. A father of six children and a husband. Got a gallbladder inf infection that turned into septic infection and it killed him at age 47. He went in a hospital one day just saying, I don't feel well. And while he was sitting in the hospital, it went from I don't feel well till I feel like I'm dying. In less than 24 hours, he was dead. 
I'm saying that to you because it's certain you're going to leave here. It's absolutely certain. How or when? I don't know. But the truth of it is you don't know either. You don't know either. So in the day, there's a book of Hebrews, in the day that you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Yield to his provoking you. Yield to the wooing of Jesus because this could be your last day. God forbid, God forbid, God forbid, God forbid, God forbid. This could be your last. And if you're in here this morning and you have not made Jesus the Lord of your life, or if you walk with Jesus and you backslid, and you want to make things right with God, right now is your opportunity to do so. Right now, step out into the aisles, come down front. I just want to meet with you, talk with you. Some other people want to give you a a good solid head start in your Christian walk. Best thing you could do for mama. Commemorate the day by giving your heart to Jesus. good or is this good? Anybody else? Anybody else this morning? I just feel like the Lord's tugging at your heart. Somebody, somebody somewhere. God's tugging at your heart. Somebody somewhere this morning. God's tugging at you. It's a journey. It's a journey that begins a brand new life for you. Saints pray because I know somebody is going through. I know somebody's going through with this, with this decision right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just tell the person, I'll go with you. If you go, I'll go with you. If you want to go, I'll go with you. God's dealing with a heart. He's dealing with a heart right now. Listen, when God deals with your heart, he knows what you don't know. He knows what you don't know. This is not the satisfaction of some itch. This is God calling. This is God calling. I love it when they get here and God's already dealing with them. The hearts are already being dealt with by the Spirit of God. Brother Gilbert's dad right here. Coming to give his heart to Jesus today. It's not just another day, Willie. It's not just another day. It's God's appointment. It's God's appointment for you. Pam, who's this good-looking man? Your, your son? It's not just another day. This is not just another day. I wouldn't prolong it. You know I wouldn't. But God's still dealing with somebody's heart. A young woman. You're dealing with a young woman's heart. He 
hear me, he knows what you don't know. God's dealing with the heart of a young woman, so I'm just going to ask the saints to pray. heaven are doing right now wait 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 let me correct that let me correct that because the scripture says that there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels we say that the angels rejoice the scripture says there's rejoicing in the presence of the angels who's in the presence of the angels God Almighty God Almighty So on the throne of heaven, there is absolute joy right now. The Bible says over oh, one sinner that repents. And that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is God good or is God good? Come on, rejoice with him. Rejoice with your heavenly father. Hallelujah. Rejoice with your heavenly Father. Oh, I'm telling you, the Holy Ghost is at work. The Holy Ghost is at work. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love to see God do it. I love to see him do it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, who is this that you brought with you? This is your daughter. Your daughter grew up. You're not supposed to grow up. <laughs> this is supposed to grow up. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Pastor, nothing thrills a mother more than to see the children come. Yeah. 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 And what's your name? Abel. Abel. Abel, it's good to meet you. God's working on your heart, isn't he, Abel? Yeah. Who is this standing next to you? My girlfriend. Your girlfriend. Veronica. Veronica. Hi, Veronica. Did you and Abel make a decision to come to Jesus today? It's not just another day. This is the first day of the rest of your life. This is the first day. Every other day, According to God's record, gone. You start over. It's like hitting the restart button. Salvation is beautiful. Salvation is beautiful. All of you, lift, at, your, at the altar, just lift your hands. What's your name, sweetie? Jacqueline. How'd you find out about us, Jacqueline? My parents bought you here. Oh, your parents bought you here. The cannons are your parents. Yes, sir. Too cool. Thank you, Lord. God's already working on your heart. Mm -hmm. 
with your hands lifted up, just say this after me. Say, Father, out loud with your mouth so you can hear it. Father, I'm a sinner. I can't save myself. I can't save myself. I've tried, and I can't save myself. I accept you, Jesus Christ, into my heart as my Savior and Lord. I'm through with the world. I'm through with the devil. I'm through with myself. Do something in me. Give me the life you want me to have. And I'll serve you forever. I make the commitment. I'll serve you forever. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give God a hand of praise. Now, come on, saints of God. those of you that are at the altar uh, that good looking white guy over there with the blue eyes his name is Stephen listen, 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 listen to me nothing is more valuable to you than a right start with God it's more valuable than lubies more valuable than mariachis at mama's house they're, they're more valuable than anything else this is where you start you know you responded to the gospel today but we'll know whether or not you're serious in a few weeks. Yeah. We'll know whether or not you're serious. Because life follows. But we want to do everything God has commanded us to do to give you the very best start. My God, Abel. trembling that trembling on the inside is the spirit of God making something brand new powerful in you God's going to use you he's not just going to save you he's going to use you because you have a voice you have a voice from heaven inside you it's got to be released it's got to be released you can't stand in his way. You got to walk with him. You got to walk with him. Walk with him. All right. Follow Stephen right over there. Give, give God some praise. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. You guys can go with him if you think that makes him a bit more comfortable or settled. You can go with him back there. There's another young lady in this house this morning, and I'm going to close the service here. But I want to say to you, I know God was dealing with your heart. And actually, I know who you are. I know who you are. It's not too late. It's not too late you to come now I hope it's not your last chance if I were directed to be more direct I would be more direct I don't have a problem with being direct somebody say amen right there <laughs> but I'm just not directed to be more direct than I am right now It's almost as if God has this private thing going on with you and him. This private thing. Your heart's racing inside you right now. Love's calling. Love's calling you. Love is calling you. So 
Father, I just bless you and thank you and praise you for what you're doing today. What you're doing in the lives of people today. We honor you. Thank you for it. Thank you, Lord. This is beautiful. I didn't expect this. This is a bonus. today, Michelle? Yes. You are? You mean what you're doing? I believe you. Thank you. This is precious, folks. God is a restorer, isn't he? God is a restorer. Father, your, your hand of conviction is upon her. Her hands are trembling in my hands. I thank you for touching Lachelle's life today. Say this out to me, Lachelle. Say, I'm a sinner. I can't save myself. Jesus, I open my heart to you. Change my life. I give you my life. I'm yours now. I'm through with the world. I'm through with the devil. I'm through with myself. Thank you for making me the Lord, making you the Lord over my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Bless your heart, girl. Bless your heart. Go right back there. Go right back there. Go with her. Hallelujah. That's good right there. A grandbaby grow up with a saved mama. That's a good thing. I said that's a good thing. And as awesome as that was, it's not the young lady that I know that God is dealing with. So, Father, I just bless you and thank you for the per presence of the Holy Spirit. Lift your hands. Let me speak the blessing of God over you. Bless you. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you shalom, peace to you, nothing missing in your life, nothing broken. May his glory rest on you and keep you. May his Holy Spirit be with you, complete the purposes of God in you, and cause his word to be fulfilled in your life. And now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless, before his throne in glory, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and dominion, both now and forever. And the people of God said, amen. 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 Give the Lord a hand of praise. And you are dismissed.